we're in this series on uh, the hot topics. We have recently finished um, Ministers, Ministries, and Money. And for those of you who are not here and not aware of how that went down, uh, the Lord just moved mightily through you. In one Sunday, we raised seventy-three thousand one hundred twenty-seven dollars, and you have been and you did that without notice of you, without any notice. Um, usually, when a fundraising effort is going on, people know they come to that particular function in order to raise funds. They come with an attitude to give, um, but you didn't know, and you didn't know because the Lord really instructed me not to tell you. Uh, about it, and uh, and I made the presentation to you about quantum leap, and God graced us to take a quantum leap uh, forward last a couple of Sundays ago, and we're continuing to do that. You're going to see some things begin to happen around here as evidence of it. Those of you who have not had an opportunity to do that, we are going to have an official business meeting for the church on December the 19th. That's on a Wednesday, Wednesday, December the 19th. We'll take a look and review at where we have able to been able by the grace of God to come this year, how far, and what what we need to do for the upcoming year 2013, what is the price tags on all of that, and how we intend as a body uh, to reach those ends. All of those things are necessary for you to know because you're active, giving members of the church, and you need to know where your money's going. It needs to be clearly accountable in your eyes so that you can give with confidence that God, God's purposes are being fulfilled through your giving. December the 19th, December 19th, when is that? December, December 19th, not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, uh, starting at 7 o'clock in the evening, we're going to uh, have our official business meeting, uh, annual business meeting for the church, so make sure that you're here. If you consider yourself a, a giving and vibrant member of the uh, Faith Outreach Center International, then please be here on December 19th. We don't want to make great decisions without your knowledge or without your input. Those decisions need to be made with you. Somebody say amen. amen. And so we're going to uh, do that on the 19th of December. Uh, so we finished that ministry, Ministers, Ministries, and Money, and then we moved to hot topics. And last, uh, last Sunday, uh, our, we moved to our third hot topic, which is marriage and menopause. And I was able to do marriage last Sunday. Janice was in, uh, in St. Louis, as you guys know. She, was, um, she and I escorted her mother-in-law uh, into the presence of God. Yeah. Her mother, my mother-in-law. But it was more like my mother and her mother-in-law, actually. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but we escorted her into the presence of God last Thanksgiving Day. Uh, 148 in the morning she she breathed her last breath and do you understand you are one breath away from eternity I want to say this to everybody in the house you are just one breath away and when that one breath has expired temporal existence on earth is terminated and you have entered into eternity It is vitally necessary that you be ready to go when it's your time to go. Not many people have the occasion to have prayer and worship and song surrounding them as they're breathing their last breaths on earth and go into the presence of God. From, from the presence on earth like that to the presence of God like that. That's an awesome, beautiful thing. And not many people are strong enough to... to Watch their, their parents. My wife is an incredibly spiritual and strong woman. Uh, she, was, she needed to be there. She needed to be just as much as her mother needed her there. Uh, she needed to be there because she had, uh, that was a prayer of hers. God, let me be there when it happens. And so she was. God heard her prayers and, and, uh, and I was able to be there with her. I said to you guys last week, sometimes in a relationship, you know when you got it right. When you hit one of those moments when you say, I got that, I did that right. I had one of those moments with her, with her mother. And so we're grateful to God for it. Uh, in talking about, so I was able to talk about marriage last week without her. And uh, was able to spill all the beans on her because she wasn't here. And, 
<laughs> and the internet, yeah, the live streaming went out, so she couldn't only see just a, a portion of it last week. It was right at the, we were alt, at the altar, so everything I said was off the record. And, uh, <laughs> but this week, uh, we're talking on the subject of menopause, and I want, to, I want to introduce the subject, talking about change. Somebody say change. Change is going to happen because you're, you're in time. Everything that operates under time changes. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. You can't stop it. And since you can't stop change, and since it is a part of our human experience on earth, then we should know how to manage change powerfully. We should know how to take advantage of change. Uh, I want to look at just two passages of scripture with you, and actually, our guest uh, this morning, Staria, is going to um, open up with a with a scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes. I want to take you to one in Daniel. Let's go to Daniel chapter two. Daniel chapter number two. I'm going to begin our reading in verse uh, 16. This is, of course, a time when a king has had a uh, king ne uh, Nebuchadnezzar has had a dream. He didn't know the interpretation of it, and when his uh, when his tarot card readers and soothsayers and and one 800 number people and and uh and curanderos and and uh and everybody else bone throwers and uh they couldn't they couldn't interpret what his dream was he he had sent out a decree okay uh since you couldn't tell me what it was i'm going to destroy you all and he said he said he, how he was going to do it in very definite terms but daniel uh said why is the king making this statement? And he was told that he had a dream and nobody could tell him. Verse 16, we'll pick up there. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, and uh, his companions. Now those three names, you know more by their Chaldean name than you do by their Hebrew name. Uh, they are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Verse number 18, that they would desire uh, mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the, with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. God is going to make a difference. God will preserve others because of his children, but he makes a clear difference between his children and who are not his children. Verse number 19, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night season. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven and said, look at verse 20 and 21. Daniel answered and said, blessed be the name of God forever and forever. For wisdom and might are his. And he does what? And he changeth the times and seasons. He removeth kings and he setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. God changes times and seasons. So the seasons of your life is no surprise to God. The season in your marriage is no surprise to God. And you do have seasons in your marriage. You have a season, a honeymoon season, when everything, you just get married and, and uh, everything is just so beautiful and cool and everybody's just, just the greatest time on earth. Uh, you can't wait to get up and kiss each other without brushing your teeth in the morning, all that kind of stuff. It's that honeymoon stage. Everybody just, and nothing can go wrong uh, until, you know, you get a little into that marriage. And then you find out, man, that person's breath stinky in the morning. I'm not. <laughs> I 
I ain't going there. And the little things that start to show up in the life that now are not, you, you used to pass over, the, oh, that's just so cute. Now it's not cute, it's aggravating. You know, so you get, you get past the, <laughs> Get past that honeymoon stage and in marriage, and then you have to start really start working things out. You have to start working things out, and I had to learn how to walk in the spirit and forbear one another and, and in love. And and your love walk gets perfected as the marriage seasons, as the time and seasons change in marriage. Your love walk gets to be perfected before God and before each other. You get to see really whether or not Christ is in you, of a surety. Or did you marry the devil? One of, one of them, you're going to find out. Yeah, yeah, so no discernment, you pick the devil. So, so, so seasons change. Uh, then you get into that season after uh, the, the conflict in marriage. Uh, you get to that place where the things that you used to think needed to change right now perhaps doesn't need to change right now. It's not that you're tired and have given up. It's that you understand priorities. You understand where to place the importance on things. Some things that, uh, because in, the, in that kind of uh, stage, where, where after the honeymoon stage and the conflict stage in marriage, you, you're, in many cases, you're trying to see who's going to rule the roost here. Who's going to, be, who's going to get his or her way? And, and see, if you fight for that, if you fight for your way or their way, it, it becomes a tug of war in your relationship. And it's at that time where the enemy will make sure that somebody sashays up to you who smiles at everything you say, laugh at every one of your jokes, makes it seem like you're the smartest person on earth or the most beautiful woman on the planet. What he's doing is he's infiltrating the relationship because it is broken down through conflict. Please be aware of the fact that, uh, that when God wants to bless you, he sends a person into your life. He sends a person with a word. He sends a person with an attitude, a, a specific attitude that you need. He sends a person with a certain disposition, a certain gifting that he has. God, when God wants to bless you, he sends a person into your life. Also know that when the devil wants to curse you, he sends a person into your life. Usually it's someone who's very slick, you know, they're uh, like the Garden of Eden, very subtle in their talk and, and very attractive, attractive to you. Somehow the chemistry uh, fire is lit and you like that person and you're attracted to that person. Please don't think that your wife or your husband is the only person you're ever going to be attracted to in your whole life. That's not reality. You may be attracted to someone else, but it doesn't mean you have to go after them. Amen. Just keep looking straight at me. Just keep looking straight at me. So, so in that conflict stage, you're trying to determine who's going who's to rule the roost here. And, and the scriptures already settled that for you. It says, let them have dominion in Genesis 1.26. Not let him, not let her, let them. It's already settled way back in Genesis. Already a settled issue. Adam said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she's taken out of man. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh is a Hebrew idiom. means she is my, she is my equal. Settled from the very beginning. So if you can, if you can, if you can get along with that. Uh, Janice and I were talking several weeks ago, and she said, she said to me, uh, you know, my brothers and I, we, we never did fight. I said, hmm. Never did fight. So I watched her brothers with her when I was there. They never confront her. <laughs> her brothers just, you know, Janice said, this is where it's going to be. And they said, okay, okay, Janice, okay. She's the only girl out of four boys. So I said, Janice, I, I've learned the secret. I've learned the secret. I know why your brothers, uh, you never fought. She said, why? She said, why? So I said, because they let you have your way. <laughs> so, so, so the secret here is let you have your way as much as possible. Right? Because I don't really need to be, I don't need to have my way all the time. So let her have her way as much as possible. 
Pretty cool, huh? And when it's not possible, then you know I have to, I have to make a stand and things have to go in a different direction. So you, what's the first stage? Honeymoon stage. Honeymoon stage. Everybody, you just stay in the bathroom with each other and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> after honeymoon, conflict stage. The conflict after conflict, there's a peacemaking stage. There's a peacemaking stage. You should, you should strive to get to the peacemaking stage in your marriage where you enjoy coming home. You enjoy coming home and you enjoy the other person coming home too. Where there is a joy in your heart where you're not thinking, oh my goodness, he's here. <laughs> help me, Lord, help me, Lord. Start preaching, speaking in tongues, walking through the house. <laughs> Children said, Mom, why are you praying in tongues? Your dad is out there. Your dad is out there. No, you want, you want that peacemaking stage. You want, a peace, you want a time when peace flows like a river between you genuinely. So, so since change is going to happen, let's make sure that we understand something about it. The second passage of scripture I'm just going to quote to you is in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse number 32. David is here having a group of men come to him. He's about to come into his full kingship of the entire nation of Israel. And men are coming to him and they come with certain abilities. They're mighty men. But one group of men that, that come to him uh, are the sons of Issachar. And they were men of understanding. They were men of understanding. Here's what we seek to do with this time that we'll have with Staria this morning. Is to help you become people of understanding. So you know what's going on in the relationship where menopause is concerned, and you're able to make this season of your marriage a time that flourishes. Statistically, a lot of divorces happen during menopause because people are unprepared for it. And, uh, and everybody doesn't, uh, menopause doesn't affect all females the same way. Some of you, it could be no symptoms or signs at all as far as you can tell. As far as, far as you can tell. Those around you might be able to tell, oh, there's signs and symptoms, <laughs> missus. <laughs> but you may not be able to tell any of them at all. And then there's some that you can tell. So, so as you, we were moving through this stage of life, uh, allow God to grant some understanding to your relationship so that your relationship, even through the time of menopause, flourishes. Perimenopause, postmenopausal time. Perimenopause is that which happens before, and postmenopause, of course, after after menopause is done. So, so all those seasons, husbands, we have to walk through with our wives through those seasons of their lives. And and God grant you the grace as a husband to marry and stay married long enough to see your wives through that time, because they have to see you through times too. You know, stump, your chest used to be up here, and now it's right here. And, uh, and you used to have an afro, now you're bald-headed. You know, you have a bright smile, now you have somebody else's teeth. She, 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 she has to see you through all of those changes. Crisis that takes place in your life and periods when you begin to evaluate as a man as to whether or not your life is even worth it. It happens a couple of times. Uh, after you get past 30, you start to look, oh, my youth is gone, or my youth is leaving me. When you get to 40 years old, it starts to happen again. Do I still have it? And sometimes you get a wild notion in your mind and you want to trade your 40-year-old wife for 220s. And you just go out, you, you go out and do crazy stuff. At age 50, you think, um, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is it for me. I'm, I'm, I'm on the downhill slide. And you lose motivation and no drive. And she has to be your help meet and try to follow you and help you. And you are at the stage where you decided I can't do anything else. So just as you have to walk with her through menopause, she has to walk with you through stages in your life also. But this morning our focus is on menopause. So I'm going to ask Janice and Staria if you'll come now to join us on the platform. Give them a big God bless you as they come.
Come on, you can do better than that Faith Outreach Center. chair up a little bit okay all right Staria so uh, you took the assignment <laughs> can you hear me yeah okay uh, you took the assignment to to come into this august audience and talk to us about uh, a subject so uh, that can be so touchy, uh, the subject of menopause. Okay. So why don't we start, first of all, just with a definition. What is menopause? Menopause used to be the absence of menses for a year. That means no menstrual cycle for a year. But um, now it's when a woman, a woman starts having a symptoms of menopause and the cycles start fluctuating and when those symptoms come that's when you start having symptoms and so we look at um, lab values blood tests to tell you tell us when you're really getting closer to menopause um, I'm trying to figure that how this works yeah he had it a different way. Let's see. Oh. Thank you. Excuse us for technical difficulties. <laughs> oh, that's it. Okay. Just hold it like Got it. So you actually have a test. You have a, um, a, a physical test that they can go through to tell whether or not they're... Yes, they're in, there's a lab menopause. test that usually we um, get the follicle stimulating hormone which is mm. called the FSH and the luteinizing hormones which is called the LH okay. and those levels at if the FSH is 40 30 to 40 then usually you are in menopause okay we okay. consider that uh, that means that uh, the likelihood of you becoming pregnant is very 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 slim <laughs> <laughs> unless your name is Sarah <laughs> That's true. That is true. Unless your name is Sarah. Uh, I, w <laughs> I wanted to um, open with the uh, scripture in Ecclesiastics 3.1, which says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And menopause is just a season in your life, as Pastor Flowers said. It, this too shall pass, but it's a journey that you have to go through, and it's a journey that even the young ones who are sitting here thinking, Man, that's not going to happen to me. But believe me, it will eventually happen to you, and you will look back on this day and say, uh, someone did say that. Mm -hmm. But right mm -hmm. now, you don't think that will be your case. Um, let's see. What is menopause? Menopause means, like I said, the end of the menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a hypoestrogenic state. It means that your estrogen levels are low and that um, because they're low, the um, endometrium, which is the lining inside of the uterus, does not um, grow in order to, when you are, let me see, as a young female or as in your uh, period of childbearing, the at your monthly cycle, whenever a fo um, egg forms, it prepares for a conception. When that um, egg is not fertilized and it comes down, the endometrial lining gets thick and it prepares to receive that egg so that it can go through the stages of pregnancy. When it doesn't uh, receive that, then that lining sloughs off and that's how you get your monthly cycle. Mm -hmm. um, when you have no growth, then no endometrium growth, then you have no shedding. If you have no shedding, then you have no menses. And as I already said, the FSH is, um, when the FSH is between 30 and 40, that means that you are menopausal 
and the menop average age of menopause in this country is between age 51 and 52. How many 51 or over in the audience, ladies? Okay, so, so this is, hold your hands up real high. Uh, that's, that's a lot of ladies in this audience. Uh, and so these things that we're talking about, husbands, if you're sitting next to a woman and she just raised her hand, pay very close attention. And if she's not, you need to still pay close to it yes. if you're young because this too will happen to you. Yes. Um, what, what is, uh, what is perimenopause? perimenopause? Perimenopause is what we call that transitional period um, around menopausal time. That's the time when you start having symptoms uh, related to the fluctuation of those hormones that I told you, the FSH and mm -hmm. the LH, they will fluctuate. Some months uh, the levels may be uh, high, some months it may be low, and then you start having these symptoms in which your husband will say, what is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. uh, you may become moody, uh, you um, just may become irritated, but it's that transitional phase. and. That age is between, it says 35 to 60 on the uh, slide. Some women do not stop menstruating until their 60s. I know that's not something you want to hear, but some women do not stop menstruating until they're 60. And it can start now that's a 35. large chunk of life. That is a large chunk of your life, a large chunk. of. See why it's so important? Because it does take a large, a large period of your life. So for 25 years, men, <laughs> we, we need to be knowledgeable of what hap what's happening to our wives so that we can, so that we can not lose it ourselves and that we can help our wives transition through that time period in their lives. Uh, what, are, what are some of the, uh, the reasons that, that they're, understanding menopause and perimenopause are important? Well, like you said, uh, it's a large chunk of your life. I said 30 to 50 years, not quite that, unless you go to menopause early. One thing I did not say, though, this is what I'm talking about is a normal menopausal process. Some people, uh, some women may have surgical menopause. And by surgical menopause, I mean that they might have had a hysterectomy and they might have had their uterus and their ovaries taken out prematurely or before they hit the menopausal stage. If that happens, you go directly into menopause. So there is no transitional period. Mm -hmm. So I do want you all to understand that too. So there is the surgical menopause. So surgical menopause is menopause that happens because a woman goes through a surgical procedure. Surgical procedure. Like a hysterectomy. A total hysterectomy. And that, a total hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. all, all, both ovaries in the uterus are removed. Yes. And so therefore she moves immediately into menopausal stages at that yes. time. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And if your ovaries are left, then your ovaries will still continue to function. But a lot of times we're seeing that if your ovaries are, you may tend to go into menopause a little earlier. So um, this is, a, you start having uncomfortable symptoms. Uh, like I said, you, and I'll talk about this a little more. You start getting moody, you start having hot flashes, you start having night sweats. It, start, it just starts to disrupt your life during this perimenopausal period. You, uh, you don't know what to expect. You don't know what's going on. You may have a heightened PMS, uh, premenstrual syndrome, and uh, you get more abnormal bleeding. A lot of times during the perimenopausal stage, you will notice that your cycles are heavier, um, and uh, you're wondering what's going on, if you're going to bleed to death sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, then you um, may also get iron deficiency anemia because of the because heavy of bleeding. Because of the heavy blood loss. Mm -hmm. and, yet, and so you have to uh, be concerned about that because mm -hmm. sometimes your hematocrit and hemoglobin, that's your blood levels, can go really, and you're feeling fatigue for that, from that, and you don't know why. Um, you just get, you may get a, just a decline in your general health, as that said, and it does have a... So if there's heavy menstrual cycles, a lot of bleeding, Mm -hmm. and the woman is tired, uh, statements like, I'm tired, can show up quite frequently 
Mm -hmm. And we have to understand as a man that it may be showing up that frequently because of heavy bleeding and iron, lo iron loss during, during bloodletting. That okay. is so true. If she complains that her cycle is really heavy and she's tired and fatigue all the time and don't feel like doing anything, you may ask her to just go to her doctor and see what her levels mm -hmm. are and mm -hmm. if that's a problem. Now, I remember a period in, my, in our marriage when Janice would say, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired all the time. And I said to her, stop confessing you're tired. <laughs> see, see what I'm saying? I, I, it was probably, no doubt it's a good thing to put words of vitality and strength in her mouth, but I didn't understand what physiologically was provoking that statement. I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. If I had known that, and she was also telling me that, that during that period in her life that her menstrual cycles were heavier mm -hmm. and longer. Mm -hmm. So, but I needed to know then what I know now mm -hmm. in order to be able to help negotiate her through that rather than tolerate her during that time period. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Where is it? My mic ain't on. My mic yeah, yeah. Turn my mic on. <laughs> That's it. Now, there are some short-term effects of menopause, and what I mean is that these two shall pass, mm -hmm. like the hot flashes, um, the um, night sweats, sleeplessness, fatigue. Um, with the hot flashes, um, sometimes women will call them their own personal summers. It's uh, all of a sudden they get this flush feeling and you, if that fan comes out, you know she's having a hot flash. Uh, beads of sweat just may come. They may turn red. You know, those are symptoms that can happen at any time. You get no warning. They just happen. Mm -hmm. uh, the night sweats. If uh, your wife is kicking the covers off her out at one moment and then uh, she gets up and she has to change her nightgown because she was having, she was perspiring so much. She usually wakes, the hot flashes usually come on, cause her to start perspiring. The, uh, the, her nightgown gets wet and then she has to get up and change. Then she comes back to bed and then she's freezing and then the cycle can repeat itself several times during the night. So that in turn leads to sleeplessness. You don't get enough sleep because you're, all of these things are going on in your body, and then that makes you more fatigued, and then also the mental lapse. Now, we women can blame a lot of things on mental <laughs> lapse during this time. So, uh, but that is a symptom. But now, let me just say that uh, I'm, I'm listening to this, to, uh, see this list as a man. I see that Janice has, has gone through some of that in her, mm -hmm. in her life, but it hasn't been like the drastic swing where you know it's totally disrupted our lives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so then the the level of uh experience with these things differ in yeah women? each woman differs um Somebody may have severe hot flashes. Somebody may, I call what I had warm flashes because I just get hot for a moment and then that was it. Uh, then I can see somebody else that I work with mm -hmm. who was like, oh my God, forgive me. Uh, I, I, I'm just buckets. I mean, mm -hmm. buckets just pour down. It's, there's no normal menopause. Mm -hmm. Each, what's, what you go through is normal for you. Okay. But just know that there could be extreme and there could be light symptoms. Now, husbands, I, I wanted to just say to you in just a minute, we're going, to, uh, we're going to get to the top 10 things you can do and the top things, 10 things she can do to help your marriage flourish during that time period because I, I don't want you to panic and run out of here <laughs> with, with the stuff that you're seeing right now. Uh, what are some of these other short-term effects that happens? Moodiness. Um, because of the hormone fluctuation, um, you just start having um, mood swings, you know, like, oh my, I, don't bother me. Uh, I, 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 I forgot or just leave me alone at this particular time. Fluctuations uh, in the hormones can cause fluctuations in your mood. Heart palpitations sometimes because of the fluctuation. You may say your heart is racing. Um, headaches, you can get headaches. Um, 
Urinary incontinence is a big one too. Um, you can, um, uh, you may start leaking urine or, or you know, you may have to go out and say, I, I need some Depends now, you know. Mm. There are things that can be done for that, mm. but mm. Uh, those are symptoms that can occur. Now, now, along with the long term, the short term, there are some long term. There are some long term impacts. ones, and the long term ones, uh, which a lot of women experience, is vaginal dryness, and that means the lubricant, the lubrication that's normally there, especially when you're young, um, is not there anymore. So, uh, your uh, vagina may be dry. So. Um, you may have difficulty with sex doing mm -hmm. that because of the vaginal dryness. Uh, brain problems, cognitive, you, may, you can't think, oh, why can't I remember? I used to have a great memory and now I can't remember. You have to go back into the other room more frequently than you used to do to remember <laughs> what you were coming in there for. Um, <laughs> osteoporosis, like, which is bone loss, the thinning of the bones. Um, Estrogen is what helps keep our bones strong. And when, we, when that declines, then we have a tendency mm -hmm. to have thinning bones. So that's why they say increase your calcium intake, mm -hmm. increase your exercise intake, because you do not want to get uh, osteoporosis. Now, that can be hereditary, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, arteriosclerosis or heart, you know, blood vessels hardening or clogging. Estrogen has an effect on that, too. Your skin wrinkling, you don't have that nice glow and that things start going down south. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, mucous membranes, your mouth may feel drier, your eyes may be drier. I told you, you're in the vaginal dryness. Those are all long-term effects. And they can get worse as the time goes on. So you just need to be aware of that, too. There are a few more. Um, what they call genitalia atrophy. And what that means is that I told you about the dryness down there, but the skin starts to get very, very thin and become very sensitive. And then it could t easily tear uh, from discomfort, uh, loss of libido. I hear this so much. If I had a pill that I could give to a woman during menopause, and postmenopause, I'd be rich for the loss of libido. <laughs> <laughs> uh, joint tightness, stiffness, uh, more arthritic pain, um, insulin resistance, and that means you may be a little bit more prone to type 2 diabetes, and uh, macular degeneration, eye problems, too. Okay. Estrogen has a major effect on a, wo a woman's body, and when that declines, then a lot of things start declining too. I had one uh, patient who came in and she said, I don't know who ever called this the golden years, but if I ever find them for this <laughs> menopause, I'm going to let them know. <laughs> Let's see if there's any more, okay. I, uh, as a man, listening to the list and, and being aware of a wife who's menopausal, um, I, I think it's important that we, as men, know what we can do to help this period in our marriage be a flourishing period. Mm -hmm. Because there's some things, obviously, that's going to affect the man there, the, the loss of libido particularly. Um, now, thank, <laughs> thankfully, this, this has not been the case in our household. In fact, in fact is it not true? Is it not true that in some cases, instead of a loss of libido, there is an increase in it? Yes, there is an increase. There can be an increase in libido. Um, some, um, some women tend to reach their sexual peak in their 40s. And so there can be that increase in libido. Um, and then... Um, Menopause can happen and it can go down, but some women never, never lose their libido or their sexual desires. Um, uh, 
One of these things the Pastor Flowers asked me to expound on was the specific symptoms women may experience during menopause. And husbands, you may wonder if this is the wife that you've been with for 20 to 30 years <laughs> when she started going through these symptoms. And women are often at an increased risk for depression during this time, and you definitely need to be aware of that. And when they reach their midlife, although menopause is often believed to contribute to the onset of depression, they find now that it occurs more in perimenopausal state when women start having these mm. depressed symptoms. Uh, okay. um, these are some, oh, let me go back to the, sorry. Um, uh, how um, how uh, menopause impacts a woman's emotional state? The most common symptoms include, if you see a woman who is depressed, for two, three, and four weeks, if you see your wife being depressed during that time, you need to do something. If you find out that uh, she's not wanting to go out of the house, she's not wanting to be, she's not interested in any of the things she usually does, this is a serious sign that she may depress, be depressed, and you may need to seek uh, uh, professional help for her at that time. She may not want to, but even if you just go to your own provider and talk about the symptoms and try to find out what you can do, that would be a big help. Um, you may see a change in appetite, uh, change in her, the sleep pattern. Now, menopause, granted, will also cause a change in the sleep patterns by the hot flashes mm -hmm. and the night sweats. But if you notice that there is a drastic change, she's not sleeping at night, she's not getting up, I mean, she's getting up all the time, that's something to be concerned about. Uh, women tend to go through uh, feelings of guilt or worthlessness during this time if they're depressed. So you may want to uh, take, uh, look at those things. And another thing is... Uh, Sometimes suicide rate can be high during menopause. So, like I said, if she, you feel that there is a drastic change in her behavior, then you need to seek uh, additional help. Now, I need to say at this point, to the, particularly to the people that are members of the body of Christ, you, you and I know that we're not restricted to what happens naturally. That we have, uh, we have the life of faith and we have the precious gift of the Holy Spirit that we can employ to minimize, if not eliminate, many of these symptoms mm -hmm. that are being talked about. That is true. So, so you, you have to be aware that they do take place, but then you have the ability to go to God's word, confess his word concerning your body, confess his word concerning his, his ability to sustain you as a woman and these things that, happen, that, that could be happening in your life at this time, just so that, that you're aware of the fact that I'm not left as a victim to all of these, uh, to all of these symptoms. You, you, as a woman, you should be aware. As a husband, you should be aware that these things may challenge your wife at this time. It will be a good time for you if you see her depressed one, two, three weeks. Get her out of the house. Go do something different with her. Uh, take a walk with her. Take her someplace new. Invest time into her. Because she's your life partner for life. And so you, what you want to do is make sure that you're investing the kind of time that you need in that relationship to make her not feel. Because there is a sense of, of purpose. You know, a woman's body is born, is, is fashioned to receive seed, mature seed, give back. She, so that's a major part of who she is physiologically. When she moves to the stage of life where she can no longer do that, this sense of purpose about it may not register cognitively, but why am I, why do I now still exist? I can't have babies anymore. I don't have a libido anymore. So all of those things, all those changes, challenges taking place in her can tend to, uh, can tend to depress her. So as a husband, you need to be aware that they're happening and start doing things that, like you used to do in the honeymoon stage, to reconvince her of her love and her value to you and your relationship together so that uh, so that she doesn't feel like she's turned out to pasture you know that that, that she still has value and use and uh, and is loved and adored in your eyes um, just like pastor flower says those are things that you can do that will be extremely helpful um, for you 
for we as women who are going through menopause, these are some of the things that you can do for yourself. Support, get support, seek support for the things that you're doing. Often we are the caretakers. We take care of everybody. Uh, we're taking care of our children. We're mm -hmm. taking care of family members that may be ill or sick. We're taking care of elderly parents. Don't feel like you have to do everything yourself. That's, that's important, right? Yes. Yeah, seek, uh, ask for help. Ask your husband for help. Ask um, them to help prepare the meals. Ask them to do things for you. And like I said, don't feel like you have to do it all yourself. Exercise. This is th something that you need to do for yourself. We tend to gain weight a little bit more during uh, menopause because of the lack of estrogen, mm -hmm. estrogen, especially around our middles. And so exercise will help build those endorphins, those good hormones in your brain, and give you an additional feeling of well-being. So you want to exercise. Go for a walk. And I'll tell you, this has been a, a big key for Janice's well-being. She gets up every morning, walks. I, we purchased a trampoline, a trampoline for Janice. <laughs> Uh, she jumps on that trampoline. She'll stretch on it. She'll take our grandchildren out on it. She gets up in the tread, uh, walks on the treadmill. Those things that she's doing as a matter of exercise to keep the body in good, operable shape. And I think it has contributed also to her not losing her sense of uh, self and her libido has not declined. I think it's in part due to the fact that she is exercising and keeping herself energetic and so I encourage you women as, as you're moving through this time period uh, husbands encourage your wife go exercise <laughs> go exercise go exercise go exercise because it does reduce I mean it does get the endorphins flowing and it does help manage stress the feelings of stress if they will uh, aggressively begin to uh, pursue an exercise regimen okay I want to say something real quick oh you know what let me go ahead and let you finish and then I'll kind of okay finish. Uh, stress management. You want to do something to decrease your stress. Stress, a lot of stress can lead to depression. So just make sure that you are asking for support, like I said, to help alleviate stress. Nutrition. Nutrition plays a, a, a valid part in our lives. And every, if you're not eating right, if you're not eating healthy, at least take a vitamin supplement or something. But you need to take care of yourself doing this safe. Don't... Um, yeah. Don't smoke. Uh, cigarette smoking can also reduce the blood flow to the vagina, and that has an effect on the estrogen. And like I said, with the decreased libido and your vaginal dryness, that's something that can just enhance that. Another thing is try to have sex more often. <laughs> and all the men said. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say this is because there's, there's a saying that if you don't use it, you lose it. And, <laughs> and what I mean by that is I told you about the vaginal atrophy. And so that just causes the vagina to, the area to just dry up and to become more thinner and the opening to become smaller. So, and then the next time you do have it, it becomes more painful. Mm -hmm. So that's why... Um, Pelvic floor exercises. You've heard of the Kegel exercises where you tighten that. That's good for that area. That's good for your bladder. We tend to get a weak bladder during menopause, too, because of the lack of estrogen. Um, avoid products that can be irritable, irritating down there, like bubble baths or strong soaps or something. The skin is already very thin, very sensitive. You start saying, I'm itching down there. I'm itching. Do I have a yeast infection? I try yeast medication. It doesn't work. That's a sign of vaginal atrophy, too. So you may need something, or lubricant or something, or even vaginal estrogen cream that can help a little doing it in that area. Avoid drugs and alcohol because they can also slow down the body's response. Um, let's see. So what are, what, are, what are top ten things men can do okay. to, um, to help their marriages flourish during this time period? Let me go go to the next one. I started off with the woman's um, and we'll go back. Um, I'm going to flip over. What are the top things that men can do to flourish to help their wives? Um, be understanding. Mm -hmm. That is a, an important thing. This is not an enjoyable time for her 
and it's not an enjoyable time for you mm -hmm. also. But remember, she's the one that's going through these symptoms, mm -hmm. and she's the one that's having the hot flashes at night and the night sweats. You can do something thoughtful, maybe like if you know she's having a heart, bring her a glass of cold water mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. And if she got the temperature in the house at something you can't put, uh, can't stand, she's got it down at 60, put a sweater on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Show. And you, said, you wanted to now say those something. Those things though. are very practical uh, because she's trying to be comfortable with whatever the temperature is. And if it makes you uncomfortable as a man, deal with it. Put a sweater on. Do, 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 because what you're trying to do is help her through this time period. And instead of saying, why it's cold? What's wrong with you? you know, and, and bring that heat down <laughs> or bring that air down or up. You're trying to suit you. You're not going through these physiological changes like she's going through. So this is not a period of time to suit you. It's a period of time to suit her. Now try to work it out, you know, so that you know, you're not like this, but put something on or take something off that, that helps you regulate the temperature of your own self in the household. Okay. And show her that, uh, that you still love her. Do something special for her, you know, that she, show her that she's still the woman that you fell in love with because she is going through this metamorphosis in which she's thinking that her body does not look the same, she doesn't feel the same, and she just wants to know that you still love her. Discuss how you're feeling with her. Let her know that if you don't understand what's going on. Try to do some research yourself on what you can expect from her doing menopause. Let her know that you are trying to figure out what's going on. She will appreciate an understanding husband. And she may be irritated at you from time to time, but she will appreciate the facts. You will get points and kudos for just trying to be attentive and understanding to Amen. her. Don't take it personally. <laughs> Uh, you need to realize that your partner is distressed over her body, her lack of libido. You're frustrated. She's frustrated because she's not interested in having sex, and you are. Um, so just be understanding, and don't take it personally if she says, I don't feel like it tonight, okay? Know what to expect. Um, some women, like we said, sail through menopause. Some women will just have horrible hot flashes. Whatever menopause is for her, it's for her. It's not like, well, John said his wife only had one or two hot flashes. <laughs> not the same. And don't tell her that. Yes. Please. Um, know, when it's, uh, know when it's serious also. Know um, when you need to seek counsel from your clergy or seek counsel from someone else about the moods that your wife may be having, you know, and to see if it's serious. Um, stay optimistic. Um, make sure that, you, no, this too will pass. It's mm -hmm. only a season mm -hmm. in her life. Um, and at this time, I put men oh pause because you can pause and reflect on your life. You can fall, she's going through changes. So you know you're going to change this too. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not the same person she married 20, uh, when you were in your 20s or 30s mm -hmm. too. So as her body changes, your body is changing too. So you can take this time to reflect, to start uh, going, doing exercises or thinking about how you can make changes in your life too because you, there is a male menopause. They haven't figured out what the name of it is, <laughs> but there is a transition that men goes yeah. through also. Yeah. Midlife yes. crisis. <laughs> and keep a sense of humor. One day you can sit back and talk about maybe, hey, one day you came home, it was so cold, you went and got your winter coat out in the dead of summer, put it on, put a hat on, <laughs> and sat there and just said, honey, what's for dinner? You know, hey, <laughs> there's going to be some humorous m moments, and you can look back on that and laugh. So... Well, this is uh, what, what we sought to do. Uh, would you give uh, Star your hand? Jen's going to have a comment here in just a minute. But what we sought to do is to give you men and women a sense of what you're moving into, but that you're not captive by those things. You're not, you're not held captive by them. Uh, you have the, uh, the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. You have the confession of faith. You have practical things you can do 
to minimize, if not eliminate, these, these circumstances in your life. I mean, you won't eliminate uh, menopause, but you can certainly mi minimize the effect that it has on you. You are not given over to that like, as if though, you know, menopause is a Doberman pincher and you're a rag doll. Mm -hmm. and, and it just do does whatever it wants to do with you. No, you have a part in this. You have a healthy part to play in how this works out in your own spiritual life. And as husbands, I want to say the last, th this to you lastly before Janice comments. It's important that as we go through this period of time with our wives, that it also be a time when we can uh, show them a different side of us. Don't, don't be selfish, really is what it boils down to. Don't be selfish and think that she should keep conforming to whatever I need for her to make me happy. Love is defined as the giving up of oneself, as self-sacrifice joyfully for the benefit of another. In menopause is when you get to express that most. To give yourself up joyfully for the benefit of another, being your wife. And see her through this time period. Do different things with her. There are times during menopause when you would normally take a hug to move on into sexual activity, that you would, at this period need to be the kind of person that will just hold your wife just because you know she needs to be held without any obligation to go further. Yep. <laughs> this is why I said, well, well, you know, my libido, is nothing wrong with my libido, Pastor. What do I do with my libido? The body is not for fornication, 1 Corinthians. The body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. So I take my libido, my sex drive, and give it to God. Amen. Got real quiet in this Presbyterian church right there. But, but you give your libido over to God. You, you allow him to manage these urges that you have. Because just as much as she has to walk in the spirit through these changes, you have to walk in the spirit through them too. And if you fail, don't beat yourself up over it. You go to God, you confess your sin. He's faithful and just to forgive your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness and give you the strength not to repeat sin. Amen. So, so manage, go through menopause in the physiological side of it, but also go through it spiritually. And if you go through it spiritually, you'll win and your marriage will flourish. If you go through it just physiologically, you're going to cripple yourself and cripple your mate and, and all those things about uh, those stats about divorce and those kind of things that happen at this time in your life, uh, in people's lives, start to skyrocket because they don't take time to carefully manage through this, uh, this time period in their lives. So we're going to close with Janice's comments and then we'll... I just want to say, um, you. <laughs> you know, I look at this time of my life as a, like she was talking about the golden years, I really feel like, man, I told, I told my husband, I said, I feel like I'm going through my second puberty yeah. it's yeah. been a blessing to me and it's i guess we blessing. see it differently i think because <laughs> i said i'm not going through menopause <laughs> and he's like oh like he made that comment about what even though people might you might think not think oh, you yeah yeah uh -huh, yeah she, she uh -huh. said that I'm, was directed I'm, I'm not going through menopause <laughs> i have no symptoms of menopause yet <laughs> <laughs> But I think it's so neat. You know, I feel like I've got a second wind on life. My children are grown. And so I think perspective really true. has a great that is true. Uh, pl uh, part, to part to play in it. You know, mm -hmm. how do you see it? You know, and so, and, and, and just being, and I know there's physiological things also, and I don't, I don't want to minimize that, you know, but I do want to say that, you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Mm -hmm. You know, he is the one who keeps us. And so as our focus is on him, then he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we are able to ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of us. And so, you know, we definitely want to keep him focused, Amen. you know, keep focus on him Amen. and his power and his ability in us mm -hmm. to do great and mighty things. But I, I, you know, I think it's, it's a blessing, you know. It's the time when your children are grown. They may not be gone, but <laughs> you know, but they're they're grown, and and you have that opportunity to to look at life and say, hey, what do I want to do now? I think it's an amazing time, and I really I'm enjoying it. I'm on my trampoline. I'm jumping and I'm worshiping the Lord. It's awesome to me. I know. And and it's for me, for her, it's beautiful to see her go through it because it is another stage in her life when she's blossoming 
and, and now having, as you said earlier, usually the wife has to take care. She's taking care about it. She took care of her aging mother until she passed away on Thanksgiving Day. And, and that was a preoccupation. With, mm -hmm. with, and I said to Janice, when her mother went home to be with the Lord, something lifted off of her. Because as the only girl, she, was, she felt obligated more than the boys to be with her mother and couldn't be with her. We, we were actually about to move her mother down to live with us um, about a year ago. No. 07 when my dad passed oh, and, away. Yes, in 07 when her dad passed away. But her brother moved in and took that, uh, took that responsibility uh, for physical care off of her, but it didn't leave Janice mentally. She was still preoccupied about the welfare of her mother. And then when her mother went home to be with the Lord, it, it released something. But I, I can witness, I can stand as a witness, that this stage in her life has been a stage when she is exactly like she described. She's starting to see life differently, beginning to take on some new interest, do different stuff. And I say to husbands, support that. If it disrupts your normal flow, so what? Give yourself sacrificially to her to see her move forward in this time period in her life. If it, if it means you have to do a little something different, do something different. She, she birthed your children, tolerated you and all that stuff for all these years. Now it's time for you to invest back into her. Mm -hmm. During that time period amen. in your she said, Amen. She about she about thirty years from menopause saying, <laughs> saying Amen over there. <laughs> but, but you guys uh, be aware that these dynamics do take place and, and, and we want your life to be enriched and helped by it. Would you stand? We'll stand together. I want to we'll, thank Loretta for finding uh, Staria for us. Thank you, thank you Loretta. Loretta Brown. Anybody help this morning? Anybody help with this information? Was it a blessing to you? Good, good. At least five of you will help. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is, this is really a, 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 a different kind of presentation, which we do every once in a while. When you come here, you should know what to expect. There should be something different from God and suitable and valuable to your lives. Even if you are not a husband or a wife who is in menopause at this time or maybe even postmenopausal, um, these things are valuable for young people to know too because they're going to happen. And uh, as they happen, then you need to be aware of them and move in the right direction concerning them. Would you bow your heads? I want to pray for couples, and then we're going to make our way over to the Christmas shop. Uh, with, your, with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, you may be saying this morning, Pastor, uh, I didn't know that the, the turbulence in my relationship is caused by perimenopausal or menopausal symptoms. And I, I've been, a, my marriage has been less than calm. but I want my marriage to be God-honoring. Put your heads bowed and your eyes closed. We just lift a hand where I can see it. I want to pray for you there. I want my marriage to be God-honoring. Okay. I see those hands. I do want to pray for you now. Precious Father, I feel inadequate, but it's in, it's in that inadequacy that my dependence upon you grows. And I pray for these marriages. Every one of them that is that the perimenopausal, coming into menopausal periods or, or, or in the throes of menopause, I pray that you would strengthen the husband, strengthen the wife. Let this be a time and a season when their marriages flourish. Like you have done with Janice, I pray that you would just cause women's lives to take on a new dimension, a new period of growth and vitality in life. And I praise you for them. I ask that the Holy Spirit now would just uh, arrest marriages, that the Holy Spirit would come upon them and seize them and guide them through this what could otherwise be very turbulent water 
And God, I thank you for being faithful to marriages. I thank you that you are faithful. And I thank you that you're teaching us to be faithful. You're teaching us to be faithful. Faithful in our hearts and faithful in our actions toward you and toward one another. And we give you the praise and we give you the thanks for it. In Jesus' precious name. Well, I just was going to say that I asked Staria if we could use that uh, presentation. And she said that we could use it and put it on our website. So that would be a blessing. Yes. So if you know of couples who are at each other's throat, they're just having a rough time with it. They're having a rough time with it. They don't understand some things about it. And they need to know uh, that PowerPoint stuff will be available on our website for you to go see. Lift your hands. Let me speak the blessing of God over you. Uh, I want to remind you about the Christmas shop. Please don't go anywhere else to have dinner today. Go right, right across the, the parking lot over to building number three. Uh, get your two taquitos and rice and beans and enjoy your time of fellowship as you shop over there today. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, peace to you, nothing missing in your life and nothing broken. May your marriage reflect the glory of God. May it be a flourishing time in your relationship with your husband and your wife. And may your children rise up and call your marriage blessed. And may this be a time period where their eyes see and their ears hear the goodness of God in these years in your lives as husbands and wives together. And I rebuke divorce and suicide and depression in the name of Jesus, standing in the glory of God, standing in the authority of the name of Jesus. I release and speak blessing, blessing over your life and marriage, blessing and enrichment over your marriage lives in the name of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done and will do in your relationship. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne in glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and dominion, both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. You're free to go.